Hello and welcome to the second part of the tutorials using STSOC to program our cyberboard. Today we start with where we want to go today. So you see some blinking LEDs on the board and that's what you should get out of this tutorial, some blinking LEDs on your board. And let's hop over right to STSOC to start a new project and as we did last time, we have to choose a name, a platform and an OS and sadly this time we can't use the built-in platform for Cybo. The reason for that is the built-in platform doesn't include all the drivers we need to run GPIO to drive the LEDs. So what I did yesterday is I had a look out for a pre-built platform that includes all these drivers we need and happily the manufacturer of the board, which is Digiland, um, provides in his GitHub, which you can find here, when you look for SDSOC platforms, this handy platform we can use in SDSOC, including all the drivers. So you can download that zip, which goes right to my download folder. Oh, I think there is already one and we have to extract that one and after that we can use it directly in SDSOC so let's look for our download folder, let's look for the Cybermaster 2 and inside that you got this whole folder structure and what is important to that is the two files down here, the Cyber HDMI in hardware PFM and the Cyber HDMI in software PFM. That is what SDSOC is looking for and is needed to use this platform. There are some other directories in here, mainly which we will look in is the ARM Xilinx EABI and the same goes for Linux, which means this which I selected now for Linux is the Linux version where we want to run an OS and this one is the standalone version and inside these folders we have libraries these include libraries where you see the one for the Linux system is pretty empty where the one for the standalone version contains tons of header files which we can use um, to run our stuff on the board and there will be we will look into two of these files a little more but right at the moment we just only want to use the platform so we choose our platform and as I mentioned we have to use the standalone version because there are only in the standalone versions the necessary includes of the libraries we need we give it a fancy name create an empty application and there we are. We create a f source file which we name LEDC from the C templates and get an empty canvas where we can put our code in. I prepared a little and just copy and paste that one onto this canvas and let's get through this one line by line just to make sure everything is clear. First of all we include a header file which is directly um, named as I can't include this one. Um, first where is that header file and as I showed you inside this directory structure it's in the standalone version in the includes and there we have two files which we are interested in. The one we are including here, GPIO, XGPIO header and one which we will need for some defines, xparameters.h. So that's, that's where we find that XGPIO and we will have a look inside that GPIO soon. So this question mark gets resolved when you build the whole project there is inside the platform definition there is this linker script and this linker script will find the right header files for your project which ones you included while compiling it so the reason this question mark is here is 
SD SOC, which is mainly built on Eclipse, um, doesn't know by now that there is an XGPIO head. But that will get resolved as we build the project. Next we have some defines here, which we will need. We need a device ID from the AXI bus, because the driver we're using, XGPIO header, is using the XI bus to drive the GPIOs. And we just use this long name and define it to a shorter name, and this long name is found inside the X parameters H. And you have to scroll down a little in that xparameters.h to nearly line 300 to find the definitions for the GPIO driven over XI. And mainly there you have to look out for the LEDs. There is some more, there you see some software definitions, some video definitions and lots of stuff more. But what we are interested in is which device ID has our XI LED GPIO. And we use that to define our own little shorter one. Next line is the delay. We don't have want to blink the LEDs too fast, so we put in a delay. Um, we will discuss that later when we're down here at this line. And the channel we're writing onto the XI bus uh, is one, which you will find also in the X parameters dot H. Now we're running at our main and inside the main the first thing we have to do is build an instance of our XGPIO driver. That is a struct which is given inside the XGPIO header file and mainly it's this struct. You don't have to care what's inside the struct, that will get filled automatically by this initialization function. You see this GPI, uh, XGPIO initialize takes our instance, takes the ID which we defined early on and fills that instance with all the necessary stuff that needs to be in the struct. This function is found also inside the XGPIO age and is mainly this one. You can just use it. We do a little check for errors if the if the initialization went wrong we throw an error here and after that we go in for the blink loops. First of all we don't want to stop our board blinking that's why we're doing this in the while one loop and then afterward we do a binary counting which is done by this for loop from 0 to 63 and put that variable we created here in that loop into this function. This function is also found into inside the XGPIO header and means you can write on this channel using the instance of GPIO which we initialized earlier and this is the value we're writing to it which means the variable from the loop which is counting up like binary counting. That's why you see your LEDs blinking the fours, the four LEDs, like they're counting up binary. And after that, inside the loop, we're doing a little delay where we defined the amount of the delay earlier. That's, that's it for so far. Now we can build our project and while building the project or shortly after, you will see that that question mark will get removed as the linker script is finding all that stuff. Oh, I should not forget to set the active build configuration to SD release that we directly get our SD card files which we have to copy over and after that we build the project. <coughs> when you're building that project from a new platform it will take quite a while for the first run and doing the next runs should be very much faster um, but as I just downloaded the stuff and build it again we have to go through this and as you see slowly the SD card uh, SD release folder gets built there should be inside here soon an SD card folder with our files which we're interested in so I skipped a little of the building process 
just to make that video not too boring. And there we have that SD card folder where we can copy over all the stuff we need. And oh, I forgot to put my SD card inside the reader, which should pop up now. Yes, um, there's still stuff from experimenting and this is again my Cybo SD card and I copy over all that stuff here onto the card, unmount that card, put it into the board, power up the board, the board should boot up into the standalone mode and we have some LEDs blinking. And as you can see the question mark for the include XGPIO had had uh, removed itself and now and that was a kind of surprise to me I can click this file and have it now inside the SD sock I don't know why we don't get to import it earlier but hey there it is and I showed you how to find it before when you build your coding stuff so that's mainly it. I hope you liked what you see and feel free to comment or to ask stuff and maybe you want to subscribe as well to get noticed when there's new videos coming up. Bye bye.